Okay, uh, let's start about uh, gymnosperms. So gymnosperms in the sense gymno, which is naked. And sperms, which is seeds. So naked seeds. And in this chapter, in this video, we are going to see about angiosperms also. Angiosperms in the sense covered or cased. Sperms in the sense seeds. Okay, so actually we call this both the plants as vascular plants. These are vascular pinerogams. Pinerogams means seeded plants. So they are popularly called naked uh, vascular plants and these are popularly co called covered seeds. So let's see uh, with the topic of uh, gymnosperms and angiosperms in this video we are going to cover. And the first point is Gobel. He is the one who has given the point of pinerogams without ovary. Okay, because ovary is not there. Uh, ovary is not there. That's why uh, there is no fruit and you will be having only seeds. The ovules are naked. That's why you can see the seeds directly. And the study of gymnosperm is known as gymnospermology. And the study of angiosperms, we call it as angiospermology. So angiosperms and gymnosperms collectively called, they are together called as spermatophyta. Okay, spermatophyta. Spermatophyta in the sense they are seed bearing plants. Okay, they are seed uh, seed bearing plants and gymnosperms have naked seeds there will be no any fruit formation takes place in these plants in gymnosperms embryo and seed formation will take place it will be taking place of embryo and seed seed is nothing but embryo right so that's why there is no fruit formation is there no fruit So gymnosperms are very limited in distribution actually. They are mainly seen in cold regions. So you can see the pine forest in Uti, Kodak and all like that. In India, gymnosperms are found in uh, Himalayan region. Xerophytes found in slope mountains and cold region. Therefore, gymnosperms are xerophyte. And coming to the next thing, all gymnosperms are vascular. So now, now let's come very specific about uh, gymnosperms. Gymnosperms are actually vascular plants. So, but uh, you don't have uh, two things. That is companion cells. Companion cells of phloem. And uh, xylem vessels so which is of xylem see these two things are present only for angiosperms there will be nowhere in gymnosperms there will be no in gymnosperms no this both and uh, it has both xylem and phloem as well and exception will be you have the true vessels are present for certain plants that is uh, Netum, ephedra, and velvitsia. Netum, ephedra, and velvitsia. These contains the true vessels. In gymnosperms, the vascular bundle is conjoined, means both the xylem and phloem will be present. Conjoined collateral, endarch, and open type. So that's why you can see the secondary growth. Cambium is open. We can see the secondary growth as well. It takes place in gymnosperms, and gymnosperms are woody plants. Uh, if you see, the paper is prepared from gymnosperms. Most of the gymnosperms occur in trees. From some are uh, there are shrubs also. Ephedra is a shrub. Most are trees, but uh, there are certain things. Ephedra is a shrub. And one member is specific shrub, 
So that's it. That will be bare only two leaves in its whole whole life. That is well with sia. You have you have only two leaves for its whole life. And uh, some gymnosperms we call it as woody climbers. That is netum is woody climber. And this is a shrub. And well with sia, it consists of only two leaves for the entire lifespan. So these are the speciality of the xylary vessels exceptions of gymnosperms. Next, let's go with the general features. Let's go with the general features. The dominant plant body of gymnosperm is sporophytic. So let's see the life cycle here. Sporophytic, which is 2N, diploid. Gametophytic is always haploid and sporophytic is diploid. And you have the root, stem, leaves. This differentiation will be there. And gymnosperms will be having taproot. Same like angiosperm, dicotyledon also will be having taproots. And uh, the roots of pinus, you have a speciality for the pinus. And for cycus, for cycus, pinus, we, ca we have myco mycorrhizal association. Means uh, you will be having fungal association with the roots. And cycus will be having cyanobacterial association. So this cyanobacteria is for nitrogen fixation and this mycorrhiza is for absorptive purpose for pinus. So these uh, are having, so roots of pinus have mycorrhizal association. This is why I am by mycorrhizal association. And the shoe, the cycus have the colloidal roots having nitrogen fixation like anabina and nostoc. And gymnosperms have unbranched stem, for example, in cycus, unbranched stem. And some are branched stem, such as pinus and cedrus. These are branched stem will be there. Coming to the leaves. And gymnosperms have simple or compound leaves will be there. Simple or compound leaves. The leaves are well adapted for extreme temperature, humidity and wind. So the leaves have adaptation to find the extreme conditions as well. And needs are the needle-like leaves will be there. And this reduces the surface area in conifers. And we have the thick cuticle. And sunken stomata. For conservation of water. And let's see the life cycle of gymnosperms. This here. Let's start with life cycle of gymnosperms. And uh, let's go with the very first thing. Sporophyte. So the plant body is diploid sporophyte. And this gymnosperms all are dioecious. That is male and female plants are separate. All gymnosperms are dioecious. You have a separate plants. And but exceptionally, the pinus is an exception. Pine trees are monoecious. Pinus is uh, bisexual. Or we otherwise call it as Monoecious. And all gymnosperms are heterosporous. It consists of two types of spores. Male spores, we call it as microspores. And female spores, we call it as, this is uh, female and male. Male spores are microspores. Female spores are megaspores. So, this two types of uh, spores are formed in two different sporangia. So, micro is formed in pollen sac 
So microspores are formed in microsporangia. We also call it as a pollen sac. So this happens in pollen sac or we otherwise call it as microsporangia and megasporangia we otherwise call it as ovule. And we have, but the sporangia format will be on different sporophylls. So we call the microsporangia or the pollen sac is formed in microsporophyll. It is also known as stamen. And the megasporangium is formed in carpal. So this is formed in stamen and this is formed in carpal. So both the type of sporophylls are found in groups to form male cone and female cone. So we have the male cone and female cone, separate cones will be there. And the stamen is present in male cone. So this is present in female cone. So the male and female stroboli born on same tree in monoecious pines or on different trees on dioecious, for example, cycas. Pinus is monoecious, cycas is dioecious. And uh, we have gymnosperm cone are just like flowers of angiosperms. Carpels of angiosperms and gymnosperms are different to each other. So coming to the carpel of uh, uh, gymnosperm. So we have the carpels. So the carpel of gymnosperm is less modified leaf. It keeps its identity. Ovule of gymnosperms develops openly on the carpel. The ovule doesn't have any ovary to cover the ovules. So the ovules will be, the ovules is present naked. So therefore carpel of gymnosperm is termed as open carpel. So this carpel is open carpel. And each ovule is unitech unitegmic means single integument or orthotropous ovary this one is okay orthotropous in the sense you can find like this so single covering will be there and it is orthotropous carpels of angiosperms are nothing but the carpel is a modified leaf sporophylls lost its identity because the angiosperm carpel is divided into three parts you will be having these things And you have this uh, stigma. And you have the style. And ovary. And ovules. So this is angiospermic one. And therefore, the ovule is enclosed inside the ovary. So this uh, carpal is termed as closed carpal. So meiosis takes place in microsporangium and megasporangium to form microspore or megaspore. Okay. And in gymnosperms, including angiosperms, the spores is endosporic. Means the germination of spore happens within the sporangenous tissue. And male gamete after germination will form pollen grain that we otherwise call it as microspore. Microspore. And the female gamete will germinate. And the female gamete, uh, the male gamete for the male gametophyte finally is known as pollen grain. The male gametophyte forms male gamete. The lower gymnosperms, the male gametes are motile and multiciliated. So for the lower gymnosperms, male gametes are motile and multiciliate. In higher gymnosperms and angiosperms, the male gametes are non-motile due to absence of cilia and flagella. So they don't have any cilia or flagella. The higher gymnosperms doesn't require any water for fertilization. 
the megasporangium uh, ovule only one cell will be there only one cell of nucellus is differentiated into megaspore mother cell so for every one carpel uh, one uh, only one cell will be there so the megaspore uh, mother cell will differentiate to form megaspore and the female gametophyte will be formed after germination of megaspore okay so the female gametophyte consists of only two types of structures one will form the egg cell and other will form the uh, the archegonia which forms the egg and endosperm which is nutrition to for the development of embryo so here in the ovule you have only two things one is egg cell that is archegonia and you can see this archegonia terminology in bryophytes pteridophytes and in gymnosperms and we have one more thing called nucellus so nucellus will provide nutrition to the archegonia so only two cells will be there here not like seven celled uh, eight seven celled and eight nucleus stage in angiosperms so next is uh, pollination so the pollination consists of pollen grain the pollen grain reaches the micropyle of ovule by wind when it reaches the ovule so this type of pollination we call it as anemophilus and pollination happens by wind and this anemophily uh, is by air commonly seen in gymnosperms fertilization we otherwise call it as so for lower gymnosperms it is judeo siphonogamy and for higher gymnosperms because it is motile and multiciliated for higher things we call it as siphonogamy even for angiosperms also it is siphonogamy so because uh, it judeo siphonogamy the male gametes are motile and multiciliated and it can be passed through pollen tube so but here there is male gametes are non motile and multiciliated so the male gamete has to pass through the pollen tube that's why it is siphonogam after pollination the male and female gametes will unite to form zygote so universally if it is a zygote it would be a diploid so only single fertilization takes place so that single uh, for ovary will be so, sorry single zygote will be formed so but in angiosperms you have double fertilization so because it is seven celled and eight nucleus one male gamete will fuse with egg cell to form embryo to form zygote a zygote to embryo and other male gamete will fuse with the polar nuclei to form endosperm which is triploid but here uh, the major difference is here the endosperm is formed prior to the fertilization that's why here it is haploid the zygote the zygote is actually diploid to n and afterwards it forms zygote zygote to embryo so seed is equal to ovule plus embryo ovule is in megasporangia so embryo enclosed at the ovule becomes development of spore that is endosporic we all know seeds are not formed in pteridophytes because the germination of spores is exosporic so embryo will be developed outside the sporangia so if you see the embryo encloses in the inside the ovule because the development of the spores but seeds are not formed in pteridophyta you can't see the here the embryo is formed endosporically but in pteridophytes the embryo is formed exosporically because there is nothing like uh, ovule all those things that's why it is outside uh, that was the main difference to be noted so let's see once again in detail about the life cycle part so we have uh, 
it consists of male and female mostly these plants are dioecious having separate but we have uh, the different cycles is more monoecious having bisexual thing so let's see the life cycle of angiosperms and gymnosperms is usually called diplontic life cycle the gametic generation is actually short lived here and gamete gametophyte is entirely dependent on sporophyte and gametophyte is very reduced we call it as pollen grain and we call it as embryo sac so but uh, you can see uh, like a very identified uh, gametophytic stage in bryophyte and pteridophyte so let's see the gametophyte remain within the sporangia and sporophyte okay let's begin sporophyte here it is 2n as well and this is one more plant because these are mostly dioecious variety having separate plants and the pollination will happens by wind so 2n so we'll go with male cone here it is female cone in the male cone we have microsporophylls microsporophylls and in female cone we have megasporophylls and inside the microsporophylls we have microsporangium we otherwise call it as pollen sac and megasporophylls we call it as megasporangium so this will undergo meiosis to form pollen grain so male gametophyte and this will undergo meiosis to form megaspore which is embryo sac so you can see this embryo sac is entirely present in the sporophyte this pollen grain is entirely present in sporophyte as well and this pollen grains this may pollen grain consists of haploid and here we have embryo sac consists of two things one is archegonia and other one is endosperm here endosperm is haploid archegonia is haploid this will develop into egg so this pollen grain and archegonia this both will unite by anemophilus which is pollination by air and by judeo siphonogamy or siphonogamy and this will form zygote this is 2n this zygote will give rise to mitosis embryo so embryo is nothing but uh, ovule plus seed ovule plus embryo ovule will be enclosing the embryo so finally this embryo gives rise to again back to sporophyte okay or this or this So this is the complete life cycle. So this life cycle we call it as diplontic. So diplontic life cycle. And coming to remember the points, anthridia is absent in gymnosperms and angiosperms. You can't see the terminology of anthridia, but you can. You will be seeing archegonia. So anthridia is the last thing is you can. You will see in pteridophyta. Anthridia you will be seeing in. bryophyta and pteridophyta but archegonia you will be seeing in bryophyta pteridophyta as well as gymnosperms but evolution of archegonia will be developed in liverworts it is very well developed in moss and gymnosperm is the last group so this group is very much reduced where you can see the archegonia is the gymnosperm is the last one the neck of the archegonia of ephedra is the longest okay so netum ephedra you have seen the wetwells wetwellsia this we have xylary vessels 
and ephedra is uh, the neck will be having longest longest that was the point to be noted And during evolution, the gametophyte is becomes reduced, but the sporophyte is very well developed. But in bryophyte, the gametophyte is well developed, sporophyte is reduced. So in uh, bryophyte, the very special character is the sporophyte is actually dependent on gametophyte. In pteridophyte, you can see the separate life of sporophyte as well as gametophyte. When it comes to uh, like uh, Gymnosperms and angiosperms, the gametophyte is very well reduced and uh, that is entirely dependent on sporophyte. So these are the changes you will be seeing. So coming to the three things you just observed, sex organs. So first thing is algae. Algae, the sex organ we call, female sex organ we call it as oogonium. This is a female and this is male. Okay. And male we call it as antheridium. Or we otherwise call it as globule. And we have the bryophyta. Bryophyta is... Archegonium, okay. Archegonium. Even for pteridophyta is also archegonium. Is also archegonium. Um, in the both place it is antheridium. And here also it is antheridium. So I'm coming to gymnosperms as well as angiosperms. In gymnosperms, we call it as carpels and archegonium. Here we call it as stamens or andresium. Androecia. And here uh, for angiosperms, we call it as only carpels. Carpels or gynecium. Gynecium. And here also stamens and androecia. You can see here the archegonium you can see in bryophyta, pteridophyta, and gymnosperms. But antheridium, algae. Bryophyta and pteridophyta. Okay, so these are the parts. And let's see the gymnosperms. Gymnosperm division. So you can see the division of gymnosperms into majorly of two things. One is cycadophyta. Other one is coniferophyta, cycadophyta, coniferophyta. So cycadophyta. So these uh, are very resemble with the uh, fern pteridophyta. And the male gametes are motile. Presence of rementa, we have uh, megafillus and uh, macrophyllus, we call it as. Because the vascular bundles are amphicribal and psychodophyta is again divided into three orders. And so, and coniferophyta, okay. So, and we have one more thing that is coniferophyta, again we have. Ginkgos, Q 
cord dye tails, coniferals, So the this conifera phyta is nothing but the oldest order actually. This ginkgo gales are the oldest order of, and maximum plants of this are extinct. Only one plant uh, that is ginkgo biloba that is present in India. That too in Manali. Some plants are also present in China as well. And the uh, ginkgo biloba we call it as uh, living fossil. This is the living fossil. Or we otherwise call it as a maiden hair tree. Ginkgo biloba belong to higher gymnosperms, but the male gametes are motile and fertilization will happen as duodenosiphonogamy. And this is it, it is completely extinct. Cord tails, it is completely extinct. And you have a coniferals. This coniferals include are the largest of gymnosperms. So we'll see some of this coniferals. We have pinus. The roots will be having the fungal association. So we have uh, mycorrhiza. And pinus species, uh, a resin called turpentine is obtained from it and uh, the turpentine will be used as a varnish, pinus. And we have the and cedrus, which is the wood is used for making matchsticks. Matchsticks and uh, Railway sleepers, furniture, and light furniture, packing case, etc. And we have the taxus, which is called the yew tree. And abyss. Abyss, that is uh, Canada balsam. So this is used to make a permanent slides in the biology laboratory. And next is uh, Juniperus virginiana. Juniperus virginiana. This is obtained, uh, then oil is obtained from cedar wood oil. So it is used for cleansing fluid in biological laboratory. So it is also used in microscope to increase the resolution power. This oil is used as a nail polish remover as well. And we have a wood uh, used in pencil manufacturing that also done by Juniperus. Okay, we'll go with the next thing. And next we have uh, Araucaria species, which is Christmas tree. And we have the Sicovia. Sicovia gigantum. Sicovia is the tallest tree so far and redwood tree. Redwood tree, this is the tallest gymnosperm. So, because these plants are very heavy, that's why we call it as father of forest. Or we otherwise call it as Sherman tree as well. Uh, this is the only tree in the species that is present in California and America, that is Sicovia gigantum. Metasicovia is the living fossil. Ginkgo is the living fossil as well as uh, Metasicovia. 
You can find in China Valley, Meta Sequoia. This is also a living fossil. And next, finally, nettles. Ginkgo, quadratiles, coniferals, and nettles. These are most advanced gymnosperms. And you can see exceptionally uh, vessels in their plant body. Ovule is group of bitechnic, means having two coverings. Archegonia is absent in these members of the group. And netum, vetchvelsia, uh, velvetsia, two leaves in its whole life. Pollination will happen by insects actually. Ephedra, it is exceptionally, archegonia is present in ephedra. You can see archegonia. And archegonia, uh, this gymnosperm is commonly found in Rajasthan. Ephedra, this medicinal plants, ephedra is obtained from it actually. It is also very efficient in asthma. So once again, netum, ephedra, and uh, we have uh, velvitsia. So ephedra is used for asthma as well. It consists of only two leaves and you can find it more in Rajasthan. And Velvetsia is having only two leaves in its lifespan. So ephedra is actually medicinal plant. Velvetsia, you can find it. Uh, insects will be pollinating. And uh, these are the things between. So we have Cycadophyta, Coniferophyta. And again in Coniferophyta, we have Ginkgo, Cordiatales, cord Cordiatales and Coniferales. And we have the cycadophyta and nettles. These are the things we have. And next we'll go with angiosperms. So let's see very important points about angiosperms. So these are the flowering plants and the seeds are covered, uh, covered because ovary is present, flower bearing plants, fruit, flower, fruit and the seeds having coverings. Unlike the gymnosperms where ovules are naked, but in angiosperms are the flowering plants. The pollen grains and ovules are developed in a specialized structure, which is actually flower. And the flower consists of four parts. We have uh, calyx. Calyx is made up of Sepals and corolla. Corolla is made up of petals, which is the colored part. And we have uh, androecium, which is otherwise called stamens. And we have the gynoecium, which we otherwise call carpels. Carpels or pistils. And in angiosperms, the seeds are enclosed inside the fruit. Okay, the fruit is nothing but ripened ovary. So you can see the angiosperms in large group of plants occurring in wide range of habitats. They range in size from smallest uh, angiosperm is Olfia. So you can see here the smallest uh, angiosperm. Is Olfia and the tallest tree is eucalyptus. So the, the and remember about the tallest gymnosperm, Sicovia gigantum. You can find it in California, America. Eucalyptus, this is over 100 meters. They provide us food, food or fuel, medicines, and uh, several other commercial important products. They are divided mainly into two classes. We have uh, dicots and we have monocots. 
Tricotyledon is having seeded, having two cotyledons, and we have the reticulate venation and uh, tetramerous or pentamerous leaves flowers are having four or five uh, members of floral brawls will be there. The monocotyledon, on the other hand, you can see single cotyledon, parallel venation, and trimerous flowers having only three members in the floral brawls. The male sex organ of the flower is stamen. The female sex organ is otherwise called carpal. And the stamens consists of, so you can see the stamen will be like this. And we have the filament. Filament and uh, this is anther. We have bilobular and tetrathecus anther. So you have two lobes and if you open inside, you can find like this. One, two, three, four, tetrathecus. And we have the And this is, this would be the stigma, which is the sticky part. And this is the style. And we have the ovary. And this is the ovules. Inside each ovule, you have embryo sac. So the male sex organs are stamen and the female sex organs are called carpels. And within the anther, the pollen grains, pollen mother cell, male sporangium will be there. In the male sporangium, the pollen mother cell will be there. The pollen mother cell will form into four pollen grains. And pistil consists of the swollen base, which is ovary. Okay, and each ovary consists of many ovules. So each ovule consists of megaspore mother cell. That megaspore mother cell will undergo meiosis to form one embryo sac. So in the out of three cells, so four cells, three will be degenerated. Only one will be forming the embryo sac. The embryo sac will be like this. We'll be having the two polar nuclei in the center. And you have the three antipodals. And here you have one egg cell in the center with the synergids on the either side and you have the filiform apparatus. So this is the embryo sac. So this is seven cell and eight nucleated. And the pollination will happen uh, by Insects, which is entomophilus, by wind, animophilus, and we have by water, hydrophilus. So actually where you have, uh, after discharging the pollen tube, siphonogamy it is usually. After discharging the pollen tube, you have two male gametes finally. And one male gamete will fuse with Excel. And one more male gamete will fuse with the polar nuclei. The male gamete which fuse with the Excel will form the zygote which later will form the embryo. The embryo will be present in the seed, present as a seed. And this will form the endosperm, which is triploid. This is diploid, okay? The result, so finally we call it as double fertilization. And so one male gamete will fuse with egg cell. Another male gamete will fuse with polar nuclei to form endosperm, okay? So... So these are the things regarding uh, angiosperms and gymnosperms. Let's see about the life cycles. For the life cycles, you have three types. One is haplontic. Other one is diplontic.
and another one is haplodiploid. Haplodiplontic. Okay. First thing is haplontic. You can see this life cycle for algae. But you have a few exceptions. So that is uh, for diplontic, uh, you can see, you can remember the example fucus, which is uh, brown algae. And haplodiplontic, the ectocarpus. Polysiphonia, Ectocarpus polysiphonia, and kelps are haplodiplontic, and fucus is diplontic, and we have the haplontic, which is algae. In plants, the formation of haploid and diploid plant bodies occurs because of haplodiplont diploid cells are available. Ma majority of the cycle, if it is haplontic, then it, haploid, then we call it as haplontic. And usually algae will be undergoing haplontic life cycle. Coming to haplodiplontic, you will be having uh, bryophytes and uh, pteridophytes. And uh, diplontic life cycle is gymnosperms and angiosperms. as well as the fucus of algae. And uh, haplodiplontic is bryophytes and pteridophytes, ectocarpus, polysiphonia, and kelps. Okay, so we'll see in detail about these life cycles in the coming videos. Thank you very much.